especially interesting to me as a neuroscientist who has worked on aspects of the nervous system that are involved in conscious perception, like vision and you know motion and color perception and so forth. Our lab is increasingly working on autonomic functions that are below our conscious detection. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about this notion of how our mindset shaping, how our bodies respond. We've moved from, you know, medications solving our health crises to behavioral medicine solving our health crises, increase people's exercise, get them to eat better. To what degree are these things influenced by our mindsets or beliefs about them? Welcome to Brian and Paul. I am Brian, and I'm happy to continue this discussion on mindset and as Aaliyah Crum explains to Andrew Huberman, her studies on how what we think about what we eat can truly have an impact on us and our bodies. Maybe as an example of this, if you could share with us this now famous study that uh, you've done with a milkshake study, if you um, wouldn't mind sharing the major contours of that study and the results, because I think they're extremely impressive and they really speak to this interplay between mindset and physiology. Certainly, yeah. This was a study that I ran as a graduate student at Yale University. And I had come in doing some previous work on mindsets about exercise and placebo effects in exercise and was in this sort of food domain and this emotions and food domain. And it really occurred to me that there was a very simple question that hadn't been probed yet. And that was, do our beliefs about what we're eating change our body's physiological response to that food? holding constant the objective nutrients of that thing. Before jumping into this study, what do you think? Does your mindset when eating a specific food or groups of foods truly impact how your body responds? Let's find out. So that question might sound outrageous at first. It's really not outrageous if you're coming from a place of having studied in depth placebo effects. So placebo effects are this, ro in medicine at least, are this sort of robust demonstration in which simply taking a sugar pill, taking nothing, under the impression that it's a real medication that might relieve your asthma, reduce your blood pressure, boost your immune system, can lead to those physiological effects, even though there's no objective nutrients. So to test this question, we ran a seemingly simple study. And we brought people into our lab under the impression that we were designing different milkshakes with vastly different metabolic concentrations, nutrient concentrations, um, that were designed to meet different metabolic needs of the patrons of the hospital, right? So you're gonna come in, you're gonna taste these milkshakes, and we're gonna measure your body's physiological response to them. This was a within subjects design, so it was the same people uh, consuming two different milkshakes, two different time points separated by a week. And at one time point, they were told that they were consuming this really high fat, high caloric, indulgent milkshake. It was like a 620 calorie, super high fat and sugar. The other time point, they were told that it was a low-fat, low-calorie, sensible sort of diet shake. In reality, it was the exact same shake. It was right in the middle. It was like 300 calories, moderate amount of, of fats and sugars. And we were measuring their body's gut peptide response to this shake. And in particular, we were looking at the hormone ghrelin. Medical experts call it the hunger hormone, rises in ghrelin, signal, seek out food. And then theoretically, in proportion to the amount of calories you consume, ghrelin levels drop, signaling to the brain. You don't need to eat so much anymore. You can stop eating and also revving up the metabolism to burn the nutrients that were just ingested. What we found in this study was that when people thought they were consuming the high-fat, high-calorie indulgent milkshake, in response to the shake, their ghrelin levels dropped at a threefold rate <laughs> stronger than when they thought they were consuming the sensible shake. So essentially, their bodies responded as if they had consumed more food, even though it was the exact sh same shake at both time points. So this was really interesting and important for two reasons, really. One was that it was, to my knowledge, one of the first studies to show any effects of just believing that you're eating something different on your physiology. Lots of studies have shown that believing you're eating different things changes your taste, you know, and your, even your satisfaction and fullness after. But this shows that it has a metabolic or a physiological component. Now, I find this so interesting. 
our mindset when eating a healthy food or diet choice will likely maintain a higher level of ghrelin, which is indicating to our bodies that we need to eat more. That is so fascinating as when I recognized as I transitioned to a healthier eating plan and started introducing more vegetables into my diet. Now I understand why I was probably not feeling so satiated and is still hungry. Now I get there's a difference between eating vegetables and proteins in terms of the way our bodies will respond and feel full. There's no doubt about that. But one of the things that I noticed that improved my healthy eating and feeling better eating vegetables is not just the getting used to it, but as I made my vegetables, my salads, my cooked vegetables with more spices and low or no calorie sauces, that truly allowed me to feel through taste that I was more satisfied and satiated with it. And now listening to this episode between Andrew Huberman and Aliyah Crum, I'm recognizing that this is part of the process when we have a mindset that we're enjoying something and that we are satiated, we are more likely to reduce that hunger hormone, get more satisfaction out of the food that we're eating and be able to feel like we're nourishing our bodies. But the second piece was really important as well, uh, and especially for me, this was one study that really transformed the way I think about how I approach eating, and that was the manner in which it affected our physiology was somewhat counterintuitive. So I had gone in thinking, the better mindset to be in when you eat is that you're eating healthy. You know, it just makes sense. Like placebo effects, think you're healthy, you'll be healthy, you know. But that was a far too simplistic way of thinking about it. And in fact, it was the exact opposite because when these participants thought they were eating sensibly, their bodies left them still feeling physiologically hungry, right? Not satiated, which could potentially be corresponding to slower metabolism and so forth. So if you're in the interest of maintaining or losing weight, <laughs> what's the best mindset to be in? It's to be in a mindset that you're eating indulgently, that you're having enough food, that you're getting enough. And at least in that study, we showed that has a, a more adaptive effect on ghrelin responses. So interesting. In this case, a lie about how much something these milkshakes contain affected a subconscious process, because I have to imagine that the ghrelin pathway is not one that I can decide, oh, you know, this uh, particular piece of chocolate is going to really reduce my ghrelin because it's very nutrient rich, as opposed to one, if you told me that a different piece of chocolate, for instance, is low calorie or, or sugar-free chocolate or something of that sort. The ghrelin pathway, however, it seems, based on your data, is susceptible to thoughts, yeah. which is incredible. But then again, there must be crossover between conscious thought and these subconscious or kind of autonomic pathways. But it seems like the, the message from the, the milkshake study would be to really communicate to the general public that food has a potency, even healthy foods have a potency to give us energy, to fuel our immune system and endocrine system, et cetera, and that that potency can be enhanced yeah. by believing in or understanding that potency. That's exactly right. And that's where I really feel like we need to push. And what I, I try to do in our research is to not just show, oh, mindset matters, isn't that interesting? But it's both what you eat and how you think about what you eat matter. And so we really, as individuals and as a society, need to work on what is the right way to cultivate both behaviors and mindsets about those behaviors that serve us. And in the food context, again, that milkshake study really changed me on a personal level because I had been somebody who was constantly trying to restrain my eating. I wanted to maintain or, you know, <laughs> lose weight, look fit. And so I felt, was like, well, I should diet. I should have low calorie, low carb, low this, low that. But what that was doing was putting me into this constant mindset of restraint. And what that study suggested was that that mindset was potentially counteracting any benefit <laughs> right? mm -hmm. the, the, or any objective effects of the restrained diet. Because mm -hmm. my brain was saying, okay, you're restraining. Maybe my body was responding to that, but the brain was also saying, eat more food, <laughs> you know, stay hungry because right. you need to survive. And so the answer isn't, oh, we'll throw everything into the wind and just drink indulgent milkshakes all day long. Oh. 
And the answer is eat healthy foods based on the latest science and what we know to be true about nutrients and our body's response to them, but try to do so in a mindset of indulgence, a mindset of satisfaction, a mindset of enjoyment. That is really the trick. And that's what I at least try to do in my own life. I love that. So this is really some food for thought. And yes, it's pun intended for people to truly consider their mindset when they eat. Perhaps consider doing this the next time you sit down and eat. Think about what mindset do you have? Do we just turn on the television, start flipping through the channels and distract our mind because we're just shoveling food in? Believe me, I've done that a lot, <laughs> plenty of times. That was an old habit and it's still a habit that I have to constantly work on. But now that I understand more the neuroscience and biology and the impacts on physiology by what I think, my mindset towards the food that I'm eating and how I'm enjoying it and that it's nourishing and satiating my body and appetite truly have an impact on me just as it does on you and everyone else, because it's more likely to lower our ghrelin levels and make us feel more full. So whether it's that delicious milkshake or whether it is that delicious salad or anything in between, when we have a mindset of when we're eating to enjoy it and feel satiated, we are more likely to avoid that next step of grabbing the next cookie. Thank you for joining us on Brian and Paul. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch, learn, and understand this aspect of mindset, how it relates to food and our biology. We hope you continue to make progress. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel.